Transport Science and the surveyor. The, we have a surveyor and also a quantity surveyor. Those are two different personnel. Those are two different people on, on a project. When you when look at the drawing, we have that diagram, figure 1.1. It shows you how the high like the process, the high like like it shows you building owner and the weight is up to, up to the last person in the project. Yeah, ideally those are some of the 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 people in the building team. Then, and ideally, the building team it, it comes in as, as, let me call it site organization. Who's eh? for site to be productive, to, to get results from a site, at least it has to be organized. So ideally, you need, you need these people on ground in that the smooth running of the project. For example, let me say if, if they, they talk about site organization, you may you may you may think of how a site is arranged. You find that we have we have temporary structures on sites. For example, stores, offices, those are all different basic structure, temporary structures on site, but help in the smooth, smooth running of the project. So, when you look at some of the site works carried out, we have one, you have to look at choice, 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 site works carried out on site, like site and temporary works. We have choice of the site. You have to look at what type of site am I working on? How does it look like? Is it sloppy? How is the topography of the site? Then we have site investigations. Those include the nature of the soils, level of water tables, uh, yeah, survey maps, something like that. And those, those who will be doing design will be carrying out what we call so it is all these things are done in this primary works site investigations. I, I know, I know if I know if if we go back to campus. I don't know if the lockdown is. In case we go back, we shall call it, we shall have a practical. Uh, actually, a practical. Let's keep it in mind. What you need to have a practical. You go to a site, pick samples, one a disturbed sample and undisturbed sample. Then you go to the to the lab. You carry out test. That is at a bar. You carry out at a bar. You work it out. You look at the moisture content, the difference between the moisture content of the two types of samples. We have a disturbed sample and an undisturbed sample. I know that you guys understand the disturbed and undisturbed sample. Okay, I know. When you go to the lab, I'll talk to the lab technician in case we get in case we get that opportunity. Either this semester or next semester, we shall call out that, that test. So we have to compare the two. The two soils. We shall actually look, we shall look at at a bag. At a bag, it, it includes plasticity, moisture content, such elements. We shall call out those. Then another part in, in, in temporary works, we have what we call site carrying. Ideally, we go to a site and there are so many obstacles, for example, big trees, ant hills, existing structures, you have to demolish everything. Clearly, this is the demolition of existing building, rubbing out of bushes and trees, and the removal of soils to reduce levels. Ideally, we find a site that has a lot of uh, soils, for example, soft soils, and you have to first reduce the soil to remove the top layer before excavating. So in most cases, you find that you build, you build construction in the soil structure and you go, you find that you excavate one meter, but the soils are still soft. 
So you have to go at, at least another extra one meter or two meters as well as the soil is. Will be strong enough to handle the load. And basically, again, that reduces on settlement of structure. Settlement and also failure of structure. Then we have demolition. Demolition, I've talked about it. That's when we remove, in case we have existing structures, remove everything. Remove carefully all the level items such as copper, steel, fittings, domestic fittings, windows, doors, and fans. And, and some of you who do contractors, you find that you'll be selling these things, plants, things. Or you'll be stealing them. You know, you guys, in as a thieves. I know. Then, there are different methods of demolition. We have arm demolition, which are arm, deliberate collapse, wire rope, demolition by explosives. Demolition by explosives, you get, the some of you will get a chance to go to list quarry centers. If I talk about quarry centers, I think you understand. Quarry centers, where these guys pick the materials like stones. I guess some of these guys, they do explosives. They use bombs explode to, to, yeah. Then, then we find also, I know if you have seen some structures, not in Uganda, I think Uganda will take this out of these bones. Some structures we go in. For example, outside countries, they use explosives to demolish structures. They use explosives, and I know there is explosives. Yeah. Then we have what we call labeling, labeling of sites. Labeling of sites, it includes cutting and filling. You reach on a site whereby you need to cut or to fill. So, a client will ask you which one is more cheap. You have to be able to give a client that this, this MPCD is cheaper than MPCD. That, well, by cutting, it's cheaper than feeling. Find that where it's cheaper than feeling. Or feeling is cheaper than cutting. So it's up to the, the, the engineer or foreman or contractor to advise the client which one should we do. Should we cut? Should we fill? Or you, sometimes we find that the architect designed according to according to, to, to the, the landscape. But there's no need of cutting. So ideally, you also have to look at the architect design or model, or model. It's also another critical element in this area of cutting and filling. Uh, then, then we have storage of building materials. These are some of the temporary structures we have on site. Storage of building materials. The type of storage facilities required for any particular material will depend upon the following factors. That is durability, vulnerability to damage, vulnerability to theft. So you have to look at which one is which, which one. In case there's theft, for example, cement, how should I store my cement? They, they should be bio cement. Then damage, you look at which one, which one will be that. For example, roofing tiles, why should I keep them? Would they be damaged? Max funds, why should I keep them there? It, for example, is material durability so you have to look at it. Then there's what you call by we need this setting out. After that, you have to carry out setting out. I know whether you guys are trying try setting out. Which methods have you tried using in setting out? In case if there's any. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any method? Okay, ideally in setting out, you can use different methods. The, 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 the common one is it, it is, it is, it, the common one is it's called a, a one, two, three method. A one, two, three method. You have to be having a profile, profile. one, two, three method. 
So I'm coming up with a square leg, square leg, coming up with a square leg. This is the local method. Those of you who get more projects, you use that method. It's called the one, two, three method. So I'm coming up with a triangle. Okay. With sides one, two, three, then just get the hypotenuse. I know, I don't know how I can explain this. My dear, I think you guys you see it, you appreciate it more on side. In this method, we use what we, we use we use squares and builders ropes. In this method, we use profile boards, squares and builders ropes to set out using the one with three method. Another method we can use we can use ma machines. You can use a machine. Okay, here yeah, they know they call it the three four five triangle triangle. I, I hear you come up with a triangle. It's called the three four five the notes. Another method we can use machines, for example, auto stations or auto stations to set out a structure. Those those are you, you told me you told me you did survey and I think you come up with such elements, such tools, auto stations, uh W levels. Yeah, you can use this equipment to set out a structure that using the the the, the, the zero four five. Then uh, I think in the notes you see a, a, a profile board. I really don't know how. I wish I had a board. I would show you the thing. Then there's what we call establishing a data level. I think in, when you were doing your practicals, you came up with something practical. You came up with uh, with the word data, like data level. Data is like a beginning level. A data level is a fixed point of known level on site that is used to determine the block and then invert levels. There are, there are two ways of establishing a data level, and these are it can be established by transferring levels from the ordinance benchmark to the building site. I think you came across the white benchmark during your, your practical survey practicals. A benchmark, a benchmark it is, it is a starting point. It's a starting point. For example, you be like, I need this point as a benchmark. You come with the total station, you put the alert point, calibrate, calibrate your point. Because the benchmark has coordinates, you have to use those coordinates to calibrate, to calibrate your machine. You know, some machines have errors. So you have to first determine the rate at which the error is. So it's called the benchmark. So ideally, let me say, it's, we have we have to be the data level, a beginning point. For example, if you are setting out a project and it's a site, you can look, for example, for an electric pole around to be a starting point or any any nearby structure when you are setting up a structure. You're using the four three five method, triangular method. You you have to look for a starting point. Uh, excuse me. If you find someone setting up a structure, you can go. And see how they set up a structure. Ideally, they use the local method. They will, they will use two, two elements. They will use nails, hammers, uh, builders ropes, a builders rope, and a square. Ideally, that's what they will use to set up a structure. So, so, so you have to look at that. Then after that, you start your excavating your structure. And in excavating a structure, in excavation, I think when I talk about excavation, I understand. Trench excavation this is the digging of narrow trenches or required depth. But here also, when you are excavating a structure, you have to put in mind which size should I excavate? Which size, which size should I excavate? Because it is what you call working space. You have to create space for you have to create space for, for the builder to stand and construct the structure. So you have to get a working space. And, and and the principle is you look at the size of the wall. That means you get a size of wall up to 200 millimeters. You offset both on the left and the right. 200, 200. Then you build, you build the thickness of around. 
600 millimeters. 600 millimeters. Actually, on site they use millimeters, though technicians use empirical, empirical units. Those are feet, inches, what? Are they empirical? Yeah, empirical. Then metric, those are meters, such volume. So ideally, you have to excavate to 200 on both, actually in the world is 200 millimeters. You excavate 200 on both sides. In that you create working space for the person constructing the side. Then, ideally, those are some of the steps we can follow in setting out the structure. Then, when we talk about site temporary, any questions? Any questions so far? Any questions? All right. When you talk about site temporary works, Thank you very much. Setting priority, and basically it's a, it's a big term. Setting priority, for example, it may include timbering, site fencing, timbering, site fencing, site holdings, site holdings, showering, and uh, types of show, showering types of. Showing types of showing that, that basically we have the date showing and other types. But when, when I talk about holding, what do you understand by holding? Any idea if, if I talk about holding? Okay, holding. Have, have you guys come across, have you come across structures as well by the African Irish, African Irish? On the space, they put the iron sheets. And they call the iron sheets those old materials. Okay. I think the iron sheets on the site, the act has places for those those equipment. For, for the structure, it's it's called it's it's called holding. Then Holding, then we have um, fences. I, know, I think we have a fence, and also we have actually holding, holding. I've explained to you guys. Then we have what we call showering. Showering, since, since I'm alone in the group, let's read about it. Read about showering. Showing. When I talk about scaffolding, I think I understand what, what do you understand by scaffolding? What do you understand by scaffold? Anyone? If I talk about scaffold. All right, all right, all right. Any idea on scaffold? And then the reason why I'm asking. Because one, one of the elements when a site is it is safety. Site safety. And you as an engineer, you have to look at the scaffolds that I use. Are they safe for someone? Just ideally scaffolds, it may be timber, it may be steel. It may be timber, it may be steel. That's what I mean by I can understand. That's what I can explain. It may be cheap, but it may be still. So the scaffolds, these are basically how should I how should I get to be the scaffold, these are basically this is timber outside the view outside the building that people stand on to do works, for example, plastering, construction, painting. Ideally they may use steel or timber. But one of the key elements, those scaffolds are dead, if they're not well, well, well fixed, they're, they're, they're dead, they may cause accidents. 
So you have to consider safety on site. So you have to look at the safety of the project. Then, okay, no, not only the project, but also the, the workers. In terms of scaffold, we have timber scaffold. They have advantages and disadvantages in terms of cost and other things. We have tubular scaffolds. We have that this kind of steel, oh, light alloy. Yeah, we have different types of scaffolds. But it's one of the key elements that I used on site. Then we have what we call foam work. Foam work. You can have to use things, those who, those who deal. You'll be interacting with those elements, those things actually. So actually you'll be interacting with four work on the side. Those who will deal with in roads, whether roads, whether what, whether high, whether roads, whether structures, whether water, whether environment, you'll find these elements, scaffold, four work, scaffolding, everything you can. Because in water you have to construct. You have to construct calvert. For example, box calvert. Box calvert, you have you use you do foam work whether you let it on unless unless you get precast or cast. If it's cast in situ, I did there's a difference between precast and cast in situ. So if it's cast in situ, this is cast on site. Then precast it's done from factories. So ideally you have to look at those elements. Then for, you, you would deal with formwork in every project. Most of the projects there will be formwork. Because you have to model those elements. For example, you have to model a column, you have to model a beam, you have to come up with a shape. That means you, you, you need formwork. Formwork may be timber, may be steel, it may be DMF boards, may be so many materials can be used in formwork. And formwork may be we have foundation formwork, <coughs> foundation formworks. You see it in calvards, coming up with the calvard, column formwork, beam formwork, we have slab formwork. You see some pictures in the, in the notes I sent you, how for those formworks look like. And I think when you see the pictures, you'll be able to, when read sites, you'll be able to interact to understand what those formworks mean. Which kind of different sections, we have the elevations. Of everything. <laughs> those who have turning pieces, those people who come up with arch frames or arches, you have you have to use turning pieces. Turning pieces you can use. You can use plywood as the turning piece. You can use plywood as the turning piece because it's soft and not flexible. It can turn. So those will be coming up with arch frames or arches. You have to use arches. You cannot use plywood. You can use steam, but steam because it's, it's, it, it, it will just break. You can't use it, but timber is kind of flexible. It can come up with that shape. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, if we don't have questions, I'm going to send an assignment. I'll need it in two weeks' time. Joab. Yes, lecturer. Joab. Yes. Good. You don't have questions, I'm going to send an assignment. I need it in two weeks' time. It's going to be an individual assignment. Okay, it's fine. Right? Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. It's fine, eh? Yes. Yes? Yes. Good. I won't send you I won't send an assignment. I will need it in two weeks' time from now. Individual assignment and I'm gonna share with you my email. Uh, I think you'll be saying yes, 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 yes. Yes, you know. Uh, yes, uh, I've seen um, the notes you sent to us. On, yes, on yes. timbering, eh? timbering and is, yes. is that form work in the yes well there's timbering what are those things used before because i'm seeing it's like that you 
the formats are made within the the, the supervisions. The trenches. In the trenches. Now these trenches, I talked about calvers. Yeah. Edge of formwork, edge of foundation formwork. Yeah. That's why we are talking about. Which page is that? Yes. Formwork, eh? We have types of formwork, we have foundation formwork. That's why I'm talking about. Well, there is timbering. Well, there is timbering. <laughs> Timber, timber, timber. Yeah, structures like 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 homework, I don't understand. Eh, hey, what is timber? <coughs> okay, I'm seeing. Now yes. You get a structure and, and you're constructing a structure in, in toys that are loose. All oh, that stuff that somehow loose. Remember you have to first retain those soils you construct then after that you back to fill so ideally you think uh, for example we'll be having <clears throat> let me say you have a basement you have first converted the basement and the soils are loose and the, 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 the in case of any anything they can fail uh, which which may cause accidents so ideally you have to do timbering you have to retain retain that soil before leaving it, before leaving, before actually retain that soil within a time of construction. Then after construction, you can remove the timber. So again, when you look at timber, we now timber green in hard soil. When you look at hard soil, we have only a few poles and struts. Struts. Then timber living in farm soils, you when you look at there's a difference. We have more most more polling poles are uh, introduced. Then timbering in loose loose wet soils. Look at the timber in loose wet soils. We have timber aligned on both the sides of the walls and also struts inside. We also timbering in dry soils. You see the difference in timbering. You get it? Is it okay now? Yeah, I've got the yes. Uh, I'm getting you, sir. Yeah, basically, that's, that's, that's the concept idea in timbering. Just to. Okay. But in our day-to-day -day -day life, we find that we have small trenches. For example, it's a bungalow. You have small trenches, and your soils, you know, people excavate and they just do what? Excavate and they just do what? Construct without because the soils are firm. They are hard soils. And so sometimes we find that our, our, our excavation is a bit that deep. Yeah. Can you for it? Yeah, I Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other question? Any other question? Okay. I think I think I think I'm going to sign out. We meet next week. Same time. Uh, I do have remind me, I'm going to send you the assignment. Because it looks like in the class we have been two to three people. I think I'll get to know you guys when I look at your, your assignment. Remind me, I'm going to send you the assignment, our first assignment. It's going to be an individual assignment. Please, I'll send it to you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, I need to let's meet. Let's, let's meet in England on Sunday.